Okay, and welcome to another video in Cool Dude Clem's Boiling Hot Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. But I'm not complaining because I love the heat. Because I can have my fan on, the windows open, and stuff. Anyway, I thought it's about time to put the Tesla coil together, or at least, um, start building it. So I've got all the parts laid out, and this is going to be transferred onto this. Now, there's a couple of things I should have gone over that I didn't go over in the previous video. Some of you might be confused about what this actually is. Well, at the moment, this is just an oscillator, a voltage-controlled oscillator connected up to the gate driver chips so I could test them. So that's not the PLL circuit, even though I'm using the same chip that I'm going to be using. That's just a simple square wave oscillator that I just used to test the gate drive transformers. And the cores that I've used to wound my gate drive transformers are N30 grade. So, now you know. So, anyway, I think the first thing to do is start putting the transistors on this heat sink. So I'll just move all this stuff out of the way. So I've got my output transistors, which are IRFP450 MOSFETs. And I think I'm going to have the heatsink this way, because then I can clamp it onto the thing, and the, fan, the fins will be pointing outwards rather than inwards. There's a lot to be said about salvaging components. So, okay, first thing I've got to do is put some thermal grease on this. And then the Mylar thermal pads, which were salvaged out of something. And I seem to be missing one thermal pad. I know, oh, there it is. They're so transparent that even I can't see them, or even I can't see them. Right, I'll just put a little dab of thermal grease on the other side. Too much. There was a fly on the table. There isn't a fly on that table anymore. Put the MOSFETs on, screw them in, and we'll be in business. I do not want to get this stuff on my hands because this stuff, this thermal grease or thermal paste or whatever you want to call it is a real bugger to get off. I should point out that I do have spares of these transistors, so if I blow any, I've got replacements. I've only got two spares, but hopefully they won't all blow at the same time. That is, if they blow, they shouldn't do, but if they do. Now i just got to put the nuts on at the other side and I'll be back. Alrighty then. Got me MOSFETs on the heatsink. Now it's just a case of attaching these diodes, and these diodes, and these diodes, and these resistors. I decided to put the gate drive transformers, the resistors, and the diodes all on this board here. It looks quite nice and neat, as you can see. And I decided to leave out the diodes. I was going to put them on the underside of the board. And originally I did try this with the diodes, but... You know, the discharge diodes across the resistors, but the waveform wasn't quite as good like that. I got a bit more I got a bit more overshoot on the negative half of the wave, which I wasn't really all that happy with, so decided to just leave them out, but yeah. I'm quite happy with that. That's I like that. Well, I've got this connected up to my MOSFETs now, and what can I say? But this seems to be working really, really good. Anyway, I've decided to take out the voltage regulators and just power this directly off my power supply. Now before when I had the regulators in that was I was using about 16 volts and the regulators stepping that down to 12 volts. Right now I've just got the whole thing powered up on about 14 volts from the single power supply. And check out that waveform, it's absolutely just look at that. Nice steep rising and falling edges, no ringing. Okay, there is a little overshoot, but it's no problem. 
Now one thing I've overlooked is that I'm going to need some way of powering up the control circuitry and obviously I'm not going to be able to build my homemade lab power supply with me. So, I thought I'd better look into ways of powering this thing. Now the output stage is going to run directly off rectified mains, so that's what this is for, although I'm going to put a ballast on this and I am going to put some film capacitors across this transistor, um, across this capacitor so we don't get RF going into the rectifier and blowing it up. That's also going to be run ballasted and although I run my vacuum tube Tesla coils without a ballast for the most part solid state's going to blow up on you if you're not too careful whereas the valve stuff is a bit more forgiving. So anyway this was my first idea of a power supply for the control circuit. Just a simple transistor um, simple transformer. I've got transistors on the brain here. A couple of rectifying diodes and a capacitor because that's a center tapped coil. And this is the problem right here. Hardly any of the transformers that I have give me the right voltage I wanted. I mean this one was marked as a 16 volt transformer but I found out it gives 19 volts. And as you can see on the meter when we rectify it it comes to 26 volts because it's rectifying the peak voltage of the AC. That's way more than what I'm comfortable with. Alright, so let's just unplug that and discharge this cap. First spark of the video. Out of all these transformers that I tested, only two of them gave me the voltage that I wanted. Now I don't want too much difference between the voltage going in the voltage regulator and the voltage coming out of the voltage regulator because that's going to create a lot of heat. Also, I don't want the voltage to go so low that it falls out of regulation. So something in the range of 16 to 20 volts is what I was really looking for. Now this transformer gives me that, but it's way too big. So I eventually settled on this one, which I've wired up, and this gives me just about the right voltage. So I think I'm going to use this transformer. It's giving me a much more reasonable voltage. So I think I'm going to use this transformer, it's given me a much more reasonable voltage. I just out of curiositor, so that's about 21 volts. Let's see what the AC voltage is, if I could just get this off my thing. So let's measure the AC voltage coming in the rectifier. Yeah, that's about 15 volts, well, almost 16. So, there's the transformer I'm going to use. Okay then, I've come up with a solution for where I'm going to put my circuit boards. And this is it. Old PC power supply case. And I've even bolted the circuit boards to the thing. Yep, the work of a professional. And I've started making the circuit board. In fact, this is all made. I just need to do run a few little tests on it before I put the chips in. And if you're wondering about where I've put the gate drive transformers, there they are, on the board under it. Just need to make sure that we've got per circuit paths going where they should and we haven't got any nasty bridges or anything. I'm just going to walk this down the thing. We've got a connection there, but that's supposed to be there, so that's okay. That was my bad there, I accidentally touched the leads together. Okay, so that side of that chip's okay. Let's see this side of this chip. Seems good. No bridges? Okay. So these two pins here should connect to these two chips here. Let's see if that happens. Yep. Okay, that all seems good. Alright, let's see if we've got any shorts here. Always good to test, test on all the power rails, make sure there aren't any shorts there either. That all seems good. We should have continuity here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and finally, last but not least, here. Yep, let me just check these connections here, and here, okay, that all seems good. 
But let's see if the voltage regulators are doing their job. So, I'm going to put my meter across the power rails where the CD4046 is going to go. And we should have about 12 volts there when I supply power. Of course, it would help a lot if I put the meter onto the right setting. Okay, we got 11.9 volts. Well, that's close enough. I'm putting about 23 volts into this thing because that's as high as my power supply will go up to. My homemade power supply. I know someone who would say, oh no, not homemade stuff. Homemade stuff is gay. Well, screw you. Homemade stuff is awesome. Let's see what voltage we got here. We should have 12 volts. 11.8. That's a little low, but it's close enough. And finally, let's see what we got here. I'm testing them all individually. Let's put this the right way around. And have we got 12 volts? 11.88, well, that's close enough to call it. So, next thing to do is put the chips in and see if it works. Right, let's see if the CD4046 is oscillating. Don't know what frequency it's going to oscillate at, but it should be okay. Okay, we've got about 300 and something kilohertz. It's kind of jumping about a bit, but that appears to be working. So, put the other two chips in, and we should be pretty good. Okay, well that's the chips in, and it appears to be working. Although, I kind of regret getting these MIC gate chips, I don't really think they're all that good. Either that or I got a bad batch because every one of them I've tried has given me this waveform. However, all that ringing goes away when I connect up a gate drive transformer and the MOSFET gates, so I don't know, maybe they just don't like being with no load. So, next thing to do is connect these two circuits together, then get my MOSFETs, hook those up, hook that up to a quill and there we go, test the coil. Okay, well I've had a change of plan. It turns out that transformer was nowhere near powerful enough, it just did not have the grunt. So instead I'm using this transformer, and I've even installed a fan because these two chips do get rather warm. So hopefully that will just get the air circulating and hopefully make them a little bit cooler. They don't get burning hot, but you know, they're driving four MOSFET gates, so what do you expect? Also, I found the frequency range this was operating at was way too high. So I've just bodged this 470 picofarad capacitor in there instead of 330 picofarad. I'll put that in a little bit better later on, but I uh, just want to show you this. So I've got the two circuit boards screwed in place. So there's the control circuitry. And there's the gate drive transformers and the resistors and the diodes. And I've also decided to remove the voltage regulators because, as we found out earlier, I get a much better waveform closer to around 14 volts. So I put this little switch mode regulator in, and that's set to about 13 and a half. And well, let's just give this thing a little bit of a test. And then in the next video, I'm going to hook this up to a coil, and we should see some sparks. All right, so I'm just going to hook one of the MOSFETs up to my oscilloscope so we can see the waveform. Now I'm going to do my extra safe method of plugging things in. Alright. So let's take a few little measurements here. See if we can find what frequency this is operating at. I've had to ground the feedback antenna because I tried to measure the frequency before and it was the meter leads were missing with the PLL. So. Okay, so I'll just put one lead on the ground. And let's see what's coming out of the chip. Okay, so it's about 302 kilohertz. Let's increase the frequency and see what the frequency is now. About 373 kilohertz. And here's our waveform. 
and measuring the waveform at a couple of the MOSFET gates and as you can see it's pretty good so yeah I'm quite happy with that all I've got to do now is uh, well make it so this bit of wire isn't hanging out the edge there and uh, put all this in and secure it all down and uh, should work really well I mean you know once you've got the frequency roughly tuned in the PLL will take care of the rest and lo it is done so here it is, here is the completed tester coil driver. We've got the MOSFETs on the front. Let's see if you can see them. And on the side here, here is the tuning. Well, the rough tuning, because the PLL will take care of the fine tuning. And even an audio input, so we can do audio modulation. And if you wonder how that works, well, one end of the audio input is connected to the ground, and the other end is connected to pin 11 on the chip through a capacitor. And I've also got a resistor across the audio input for stability. And here is the aerial, or the antenna, whatever you want to call it, so the PLL can lock on and do its thing. Which I might actually drill another hole and put the antenna there, since that's more where the circuit is. But anyway, here it is, the completed Tesla coil driver. So in the next video, we're going to hook this up to a coil and see some sparks. So I'll see you then, and until next time, goodbye. And I know people are going to ask for schematics, so for those of you curious, here are the schematics. This is the control circuit. And this is how the MOSFETs are going to be connected when I connect coil. So now you know.